Hello, my name is Anthony and this is Bad Idea Metals. Today, I'm gonna to demonstrate how I crush drives. I've got here a conventional three and a half. This is a desktop drive. Laptop drives look very similar. And in this hand, I've got an old solid state drive. There are other styles that are more modern and they're gonna be smaller. But this right here is probably the easiest drive to destroy. We'll go through all this. The purpose of this video today is to demonstrate my processes when I am destroying drives. So why is destroying a drive important? Businesses and personal computer owners have sensitive information, whether it's credit card and client data, or it's your personal pictures or financial data from tax returns or who knows what. You don't want your information to be stolen from you. Similar to how people shred files, such as paper documents and old leases and titles and credit cards and things like that, it makes it so that it's harder for people to piece together the information that is your identity or your company's information. Inside of a traditional hard drive, there are platters that spin on a motor. As those platters are spinning, there are read and write heads that scan for the data or write data back to that spinning magnetic media. Most of the rest of the components found on or in a hard drive are to give it structure, to keep it dust free, and to protect the inner workings. Things found on the outside could include your, your chipset, which are your drivers and operations for how the computer will communicate with the drive itself. There is a small piece of RAM or random access memory that can house sensitive data. So we'll address those chips as well as the platters, which is what we're actually gonna to destroy today. The rest of this houses and contains no data. Your personal data is only gonna be found in those two places on a traditional drive. As for your solid state drives, again, you've got your chipset, but they don't have to manage spinning parts or any other any other complex moving pieces, these chipsets will communicate between the computer and your memory registers. These memory registers look exactly the same as that found on RAM and that chip right there on a standard hard drive. Those are really what we're out to destroy. When we shred these, yes, everything will be destroyed, just like a paper shredder. However, recycling purposes, that shred is really difficult for me to sort. I have a personal use for the aluminum as well as I do the precious metal recovery off the chips. So I'm not gonna shred these, but that is an acceptable option in the industry. For the remainder of this video, I'm going to demonstrate how I expose, extract, and propose to destroy the recordable media that houses your data. So here's a closer look at these drives okay this one chip it's your memory module and as the information comes in off the pins and a SATA drive would be no different these pins will communicate with the board the board tells the rest of the system how it's to perform store what little information it will in this one stick of RAM or in some other memory style like this and then from there it is communicated into the read and write heads to either be written or to extract out the information that the system wants. This is our solid state. So let's start with our solid state. So in this solid state, it's two layers deep. We have now exposed the two layers of our memory. Like I've said before, this up here is just the communications brain to this drive. As the information comes in, it is then distributed into the memory itself. So we need to destroy these chips. I typically put these in a toaster oven and melt the solder to get these chips off. In this case, I'm just gonna pop them off. Now for me personally, these chips have precious metals, which I am after which is why shredding it is not my favorite because it makes a huge mess of all of these parts. So in my drive destruction, I promise complete destruction of the information that it was on these drives. 
and I still will be able to retain the chips necessary to do my recovery as well. And these chips are added with other chips just like them. These chips, once I have them, go through an incineration process. That incineration process will destroy the carbon outer layer and expose the gold, silver, and platinum group metals that make up the internal components. And these chips are rendered completely unusable, unrecoverable, and garbage at that point. So that is my process to destroying solid state drives. I'm gonna set this off to the side to continue another time. And I am going to pull out our conventional hard drive. Now this conventional hard drive has its caddy still on and the caddy is irrelevant to me, but if the caddies do come to me and I have to remove them, I will. This is just a piece of steel, not needed for the rest of this video. Like I said before, this board, the only component that is any risk to data protection is this one chip right here, as it is our temporary storage and we can take these chips off no different than the other ones that I took off of the solid state. Okay, typically I do this with heat. These chips will be incinerated with the other chips. So now that we have addressed the memory registers that can temporarily store data in reading and writing to this drive, let's turn our attention to the platters on the inside. So to get to them, we have to remove the screws that hold this steel panel to the aluminum frame. Typically, they are torque bit, either eight or equivalently sized. And there are sometimes one or two screws that hide underneath the tape. I'm not seeing one right off, unless it's right here, like <laughs> it could be. Yep, there it is. Okay, so now that we have all the screws off, a simple prying tool will help us gain access to our drive. Again, this is steel, so we'll set that off to the side. The only components in here that are of any threat to us are the platters. These data transfer ribbons and the arms themselves cannot house the data once the power is off. Other fun components are these neodymium magnets. They're very high powered magnets, which are fun to do all sorts of things with. But again, the only components that are of any risk to us are these platters here. So you have two options. You can either unscrew them or with a punching tool, you can take a post or a bolt and a hammer and punch the motor out, which will give you the motor and these aluminum rings which fasten these platters to the motor. Once the platters are in hand, and this drive only had the one platter, but you can see that there is the potential to have multiple layers deep here. This one is just a single platter drive. We can set the drive off to the side as it no longer has any data in it that's of any risk to a company or to an individual. These discs are most often ceramic with a coating of magnetic ionized material that allows the read and write heads to record to that very thin layer on the outside. There's a belief that there's precious metals like palladium or platinum inside these discs. If that were true, then these discs would be insanely valuable once they were destroyed. They're not, and so there's really nothing to them. Others say that the disc is complete aluminum. So some discs will shatter better than others. This disc is an older disc and is not going to shatter. Some discs will literally splinter in a million pieces when you hit it with a hammer, which I just tried to do and you can see I bent the disc. So the fact that this one is actually pliable means that I have to go and destroy it a different way. So I've got a vise here and I will destroy it a different way.
I like to destroy it down to I have about four or five pieces as a minimum. Doing a few more than that is always good. However, it's overkill. Once it's bent, it's really hard to get any information off of it anyway. However, to ensure that these pieces cannot be put back together or somehow, don't ask me how, somehow read again in some other device, I like to make multiple pieces. This is, this is definitely an easier job when the platters actually shatter. So in this case, this is what remains of the platter. It is not going to be usable by anyone. So at the end of the day, I can guarantee that drives that I scrap will either look like this, where the platters are in pieces, or the chips will be incinerated for their precious metals, which I will also reclaim. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and I will be happy to answer any questions that you have.